welcome to the Art Workshop here on Pike TV. My name is Christopher Effling. I thank you so much for tuning in today. This show is designed for you. Uh, everything that we do here on the show is meant for you to participate at home along with us. And if you were to do that, we'd love to see your work. You can send that to us using the uh, email address provided on the screen. And if you do, uh, please include your name. Uh, we'd love to know a little bit about you. If you, as much as you want to include would be great. Maybe your age, where you go to school, if you go to school somewhere. And we'll share that artwork here on, on, on an episode. And with today's episode, we're looking at Peanuts. Uh, of course, Peanuts was created by the cartoonist Charles Schultz. Now, Peanuts is a very, very, very beloved uh, comic strip by many people. The characters have been around for a very long time. Uh, they've been well developed. Now, there's something that's very important that we have to consider when we're thinking about Peanuts. Uh, peanuts did not always look the way that they look today. So the typical characters that you think of, anywhere from Snoopy to uh, Charlie Brown, um, they started out looking a lot different than they do. And there's a good reason for that. So as cartoonists develop their um, characters, over time they change, especially if you stick with one or two or three or more characters for a very long period of time. But usually the cartoonists will land on a look for a character and stick with it. And that's exactly what Charles Schultz did. Now, Peanuts also impacted comics in general, and we'll talk a little bit about that, too. It's really interesting, uh, and, and to me anyway, to find out the history uh, uh, behind some of these beloved uh, characters and storylines that are in pop culture today. So let's look at how Peanuts has changed over time. So here is a modern book of Peanuts. Now, this is all of um, Peanuts' collected works from a period, given period of time. Now, 65 plus years, this cartoon strip has been around, and there's a few examples in here that I'd like to share with you. Now, the early strips, of course, you can't see that very well, but when I get over to here, now this is when we think of, when we think of Snoopy or Lucy, we see uh, this typical design for each character. And notice uh, Charles Schultz, this is all done with brush. So notice his line art. This is always interesting to look at when you look and consider cartoons. There's a lot of different ways to put down ink on paper. His line art is very loose, but yet, not so loose that it feels that it's a sketch. Um, it's also, though, very, very precise. All these lines may look like they were thrown in quickly with a pen, and in generally they would, but um, a lot of planning went into that. Of course, here we have, um, in the 70s, some of the couple of the characters, what they look like. When, you know, we have Woodstock and Snoopy and Linus, and these characters have developed as well, but when they first started out, they looked much different. I'm going to take one more look here at another example. All these strips were collected in newspapers. That's where you found them. So if you wanted to read Peanuts, if you wanted to look at it, you'd have to buy a newspaper. Now how this impacted comic books in general, which is what everyone thinks of when we think of comics today, is uh, very interesting. And let's go into that. I'm going to show you a couple examples from that. So these early, early comic strips from Peanuts and other, other types of uh, storylines, they, they start out, of course, in newspapers, as we said, but you can see how different the characters looked back then. Here's a couple of examples from the characters of the Peanut line. Uh, of course, Lucy looks totally different. Charlie Brown is way, way, way different. And even if we jump back to these early sketches, we can see that these characters have changed dramatically from the first examples that I shared with you earlier. But these early comic strips found in newspapers were collected. You had to wait to read them in the newspaper. But eventually, someone had the idea to collect these, all these, out of a newspaper. This was actually before Peanuts. Um, these early strips and bind them into a, a book. Uh, some people didn't want all the news with their comics. They wanted the actual um, comics collected together all at once and, and, and bound and easily accessible. So comic books were created. So all these early strips, of course, then eventually started to look like what we think of when we think of our typical comic book, which is here. Now the comic book has is, is, is been around for a while, of course, but it didn't always start out with one main title and all about one character. Like I said, it was all these different comics in one book. Now this has exploded from the time early comics were created into Marvel and DC and EC and all these comic houses, as they're called, publishing houses started to create lines of comics about one character or one group of characters. And that turned in then to comic books as we know today. Now, when I say graphic novel, a lot of folks early on, when I used to go to schools early, early on, um, I would say, who here likes graphic novels? And, and teachers actually, and this is like 11 years ago, 
they weren't really um, familiar a lot with graphic novels. And even the term graphic novel can be a little bit, you know, uh, misleading. It's, it sounds almost like it should be just geared towards adult material or something, but it's not. Graphic novels is exactly what it sounds like. It's a book of uh, graphics or artwork in sequential form, meaning one after the other, one image after the other, telling a story. Characters are important for these stories. We have tons of graphic novels today. This is one that is a collection of different types of comic strips from different artists. So this is actually a few different artists. So that's one form of a graphic novel. Another form of a graphic novel is this small little book. This is actually uh, in Britain. Uh, this company that produces these small kind of just paper um, paper bound graphic novels and they can be in color of course uh, the designs of them can change from having uh, book flaps instead of the paper it can be hard bound um, graphic novels has really changed over time here's actually one that is done from a, a, a self-published uh, comic and then we have up to date here with of course Watchmen which is a very well known graphic novel graphic novels today are actually turning into important works of literature. Uh, this is considered one of Time Magazine's 100 best novels ever. We're talking compared to Steinbeck, we're talking compared to Hemingway, all these great authors that this comic could land in that category is amazing. But they can't land anywhere unless there are characters, right? And that's what we're going to be looking at and considering today, going back to Peanuts again, we're going to be talking about characters. Now here's one character that's pretty well known in the Peanuts lineup. This is Woodstock. Now I brought this little toy in today for a reason. We're talking about designing and drawing a character. Whenever Charles Schultz came up with Woodstock, designed Woodstock, created Woodstock, he had to think of what did Woodstock look like if it was in real thing, a real object. This is a real object. This isn't drawn. This is a little toy from, I think, a Happy Meal or some sort of meal um, at a fast food restaurant. So when Charles Schultz designed this character, he thought of this in this form, though. He had to draw this character doing lots of different poses and different stances, different perspectives, meaning is it close up to you or is it far away in the back background of a, paint, a panel? Uh, he had to think about these things. So all of these characters that we're looking at, when we think about Peanuts or any comic strip, they are well thought out, well developed from early stages like we looked at a minute ago into whatever form they become. And that to me is amazing that artists can come up with a character fully developed in their mind that someone could go and take that and then produce it in 3D form and you have a real object. Um, in today's episode, we're going to be using a few materials that were important to Charles Schultz and many cartoonists even today. Of course, ink. We have to have ink, right? And then from there, we also need a pencil. So we're going to be using ink. I'm going to be using ink that is actually uh, from a brush uh, pen. So i got a brush here. This, if you're really wanting to know, is a Winsor Newton number no. 3. And, and this is a typical brush a lot of cartoonists use and this ink is sumi ink you don't need sumi ink if you don't have these materials at home that's perfectly fine if you just have an ink pen paper and pencil and eraser you're great we're good to go but the reason that I chose to bring these materials in to use is that this mimics the method and process Charles used uh, with his characters the most so if you do have a brush at home please grab that because we're definitely going to be using it the first image that we're going to be drawing today, and actually a series, this will be the first image of the drawing, is going to be um, some of these little Woodstock characters. So we'll be drawing what, you're, what you've seen earlier up here. I'm using this as a reference, so when I draw, uh, you draw along with me, and I'll be drawing below, okay? Um, we we'll also, of course, need, as I mentioned earlier, you need an eraser. If you just have one on the tip of a pencil, that's fine. I brought in a couple examples of erasers, um, a block eraser like this, and then you have a course a, a mechanical eraser almost like a mechanical pencil and if you push the end of it it pushes more eraser out of course until it until it runs out another thing that I brought in today another material is is of course my little cup that um, I put my ink in so when I dip my brush in there I have my ink ready I brought which is a very important little tool for a cartoonist it's called proof white which is um, basically white out but it's a little bit thicker it's made uh, specifically to cover areas on white paper that where you make a mistake 
because you will make mistakes. There's no doubt about it. We're also using a brush pen, this little guy here, and that's exactly what it sounds like. Basically, this pen does all the work this and this does together because inside of this, the ink is stored. So there's our materials. That's what we're going to be using. I have a couple of felt pens over here just for if I need it um, in, in designing our characters today. Now, the first thing we're going to be starting out with, of course, is a pencil. So I want you to follow along with me on your paper. And what I'm going to be doing is starting down at the bottom here, I'm going to be drawing a series of ovals. So you draw along with me just like I'm doing here. So there's one oval there, another here. So we're doing three wood stocks. So three ovals, just like that. Now we're going to be focusing on the first oval here. Woodstock, of course, this oval represents the heads of each one of these characters. So when I go in now, I'm going to be pushing down a little harder this time. And I'm going to be drawing in some detail around my oval. He has a hat on, so you can draw a straight line towards the back of the oval. Just like that on each one of them. Okay. And then he has a curved nose that comes out back in and down, and you just basically make what looks like a Hershey kiss at the bottom, and it goes back up to the head there. So this little line that connects this from the straight line comes around, down, around, and back in. So this shape is, rep is repetitive in each one of these examples. So Woodstock characters, the little bird, is drawn basically the same. So we're going to do the same thing on each one of these. So you start out the back part where you put your line, Draw this line coming out to the tip of your oval and back in. Down at the bottom, add your little Hershey kiss at the bottom here. Basically, it's like half a circle, but it connects up to the head. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to repeat this one more time over here with our last wood stock. Bring it down. Curve it in. Draw the small little Hershey kiss at the bottom and up to the head. Now we have what looks like nothing like Woodstock yet, but these three different images that we've drawn, we can still work on and turn it into something. So let's go now and put a little detail in. Just to get us all orientated where we are, let's put an eyeball in there on each one of them. So it's just a little black dot on each character there. And then we also have a couple lines that come out that forms the hair of Woodstock. Three-dimensional form, you can kind of see how that looks. So it comes out like this on each one. This is actually not hair, it's feathers, but it kind of looks like hair. And once we have that down at the bottom, now we need to add a tail on there. So just this triangle-like shape comes out from each one of them. You can make some a little bigger than others. However you want to do it, it's up to you. So I have three triangles, and then the, le the feet. The feet are real simple. You draw another oval, this one a little thinner, this one a little bit wider thin and wide like that to be the feet. And it's just drawn at the bottom of each one of these Hershey Kisses. You can connect it with a little line. We'll do that more later in ink and you'll be able to see that better. Now from there, we need to work on the hat. The hat is very simple. You want to block in this line so it's nice and thick. Once we do that, we jump back up here and we're going to draw true straight lines coming out on the ends of each of these lines, or towards the end, about in the middle, right? Um, then from there, what we do is we connect that by just going up and back down, just like that. So he's wearing sort of like a drill sergeant top hat, right? So it's got a little bit of a pointed top to it. Now, after we've completed these series of lines and these shapes, we're not going to ink those yet. We're going to actually jump over here to the right in this space and we're going to work on uh, Snoopy. Now Snoopy basically follows the same rules that we just worked with when drawing Woodstock. We start out with an oval, then we start working on the body and then the feet in that order. Okay. Starting out first up here, you're going to draw a large oval, a large oval, and it doesn't matter if it's a perfect oval, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to look perfect. It's just something on there to work with, like clay, right? We just threw a big glob of clay down on our paper, and that's what we're going to mold. Now, the first thing I want to do is pay attention to where the hat is. So he has a hat on, too. So we're going to draw the straight line going across the top of our oval, right up here. Just 
just like that. Once we have that straight line, we can start then to kind of determine where the nose will be, eyes, neck, ear, and so on. Start here, come in. This has a little bit of a, a little bit of a point up here to the nose, and then back in. So it isn't rounded like an oval. It's it's actually got a bit of a of a dip that comes up this way to connect into the top of the head, and then down at the neck, of course, we got a curve coming down like that. So this part does follow the rule of the oval a little bit, extend it out more, and then this curves in. Now at the tip up here, we're going to put, of course, his nose. It's just another circle right there. And I may go ahead and just throw the eye in here and the eyebrow. Now once we ink this, it'll start to resemble the character a little more. Now once I have the neck drawn, this area, Back here, we're going to come up this side of the oval and stop right there. Because what we're going to add at this point, of course, is his ear. With your pencil, begin to draw shapes to kind of get the ear line, the flow of what this ear is going to look like. And you can keep drawing over and over. Of course, when you're working with the pencil like this at first, you're making all these shapes, and they won't be included unless you ink them. So even though there's a lot of lines here we're not using, it's okay because once we ink everything that we want to use, we can use our trusty eraser and go back in and get rid of all these pencil lines. Okay, back to Snoopy. I've drawn the neck coming down. Now in this particular uh, setting of what's happening with Snoopy and Woodstock and things, he's got on a little bit of a handkerchief or a, some sort of a necktie. So we need to first draw this little line coming all the way across the neck two lines, one here and one here. Then from there though, we want to change it by adding almost like a small triangle there, another small triangle here. And so this turns into like a bow. Now we'll fix that more whenever we actually go in and start to ink it. Now Snoopy's body is very similar to how we worked on Woodstock. So he's got a little bit of a belly, a Hershey kiss kind of, kind of flow, but the back comes a little bit straighter than Woodstock's. Comes down like that. Kind of looks like the backward letter D. If you were to draw the letter D um, and flip it over, uh, that's exactly what we're working with. Now, just like we drew these little ovals at the bottom of all of our Woodstock characters, the same here. This is a little bit bigger, though. Snoopy has a little bit bigger feet, of course, so we want to draw a little bit larger oval, something like that. Now, he has two feet, right? He has two legs, so we'll draw the second oval sort of in the back there. And then you connect those using a straight line. Now this leg, of course, comes down to the back of the foot here. And we'll put the rest of the details in for the feet when we ink. Now let's look at the hand. The hand's really easy. It's a straight line coming down the body, and it curves in like this once, and then it curves again, and one more time. And this forms Snoopy's hand. Now in Snoopy's other hand, He's actually holding what looks like a stick or what drill sergeants used to carry around. And we're going to draw a little oval there and one right beside of it. So you have two, one, one there. And that's kind of hard to see, but there's two ovals. And then a stick that comes out. So draw a straight line coming out from those ovals and another straight line parallel and connect them. You can see a little bit of his stick out here towards the back of the character. So we'll put another little block shape there. Now we're looking at Snoopy's hat. Snoopy's hat, just like Woodstock's, is a drill sergeant type hat. So we want to make this line here a little thicker. And what I mean by that is you go on the ends and you put a straight line coming up from where you stopped. And then you draw a parallel line connecting those two, just like that. From there, we go up top here, two straight lines coming out, just like with Woodstock and then it curves up and down. Now in this character design, at least of Snoopy, this hat will be on top of his head of course, but if we weren't we would see the flow of this oval coming up and then going down and you can see how that kind of changes or we can alter that into creating the character. The last thing we need to do, he's got a spot here, we want to add that in, and then we'll go in with our brush. So get your ink ready. I'll put mine right there in the middle. 
And what I like to do is have a separate piece of paper off to the side, which I'll do this directly here on this paper so you can see. I get my ink all nice and um, um, primed on the brush. I tap it on the side a little bit because you don't want too much. And then I'll make a series of lines to see exactly how thick my ink's going to be when I apply it. So now what I'm going to do is start over here with Woodstock. And I'm going to draw all of these lines that I've made, at least all the ones I want to keep, I'm going to trace over them, just like this. If you don't have a brush at home, that's okay. You don't necessarily need a brush. Um, but I'm trying to, like I said, go as close to the original technique Schultz used to create these characters. He's got a few of these little hair sticking out, the nose. I'm just tracing my lines. Now with the brush, you have to be very careful because Number one, if you use too much ink in your brush, then you're going to have a real bad issue with all of those lines starting to bleed together or the ink running. If you use too little, your character is not going to really show up. The lines aren't. Now, even though these woodstocks are small to your screen, you can still see how by just adding a little bit of detail with your ink, the characters come alive. We'll go ahead and duplicate that tracing process two more times tracing over our other Woodstock characters. When you push down with the brush, the ink, of course, flows faster. When you don't put as much pressure, you get really thin lines. So the brush is really, really good when it comes to wanting a variation of lines, right? The width of lines. That's really important with cartooning. Not all lines are the same width. And when you actually go in and start adding thickness to lines, it can give a different effect to the character, achieving kind of the goal that you might want if you want to put feeling into a character that you're drawing or emotion. Now, we're not covering that particular uh, technique today, but we are covering application. So when you're applying these lines, kind of get an idea. You may have to practice on a separate piece of paper How's the ink going to flow when I push this amount of pressure versus another type of uh, amount of pressure? And once you do that a few times, you'll get an idea about how much you can put down on each stroke. So we've inked over our three woodstocks, and now we're looking at our Snoopy character. This, of course, is a bigger character. He's going to have a little bit thicker lines. So press down a little bit harder. And then it comes down into his neck like that. Now you're pressing down a little bit harder with these lines, of course, but the effect is still the same because we are using the width of the line to show that this character is larger. So even though the width of the line doesn't necessarily matter, um, if you're just sketching out something, when you're putting together a drawing like this to show size relation, Snoopy to Woodstock, the thicker lines help to do that. Of course, up here at the hat, now, Chulsh's lines look very loose, like I said earlier. They look almost like he just sat down and sketched this out freehand, but that's not the case at all. In fact, Chultz would draw the entire strip out in pencil first, like we did here. He would change certain things about the looks of the characters. That's how they developed over time. And then from there, he would go in and he would apply the ink as we're doing, but he would do it in a manner that looked very loose and looked very, very, very hand-drawn. Of course, it wasn't. But that's one of the magic uh, aspects, magical aspects of, of drawing. You can make something look one way, and it actually be or created totally different than what you imagine, right? So now we're inking the body. I'm still using these thicker lines in comparison to what I did with Woodstock. Let's go straight down like this into the curve of his leg. And you may want to practice on a separate sheet of paper um, how much pressure. I think that's important because it's good for you to know exactly you know, what you have uh, 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 that you're using, what you, tools you have, and what your tools can do. The more that you know your tools, the better of an artist or cartoonist you'll become. Now, you'll notice on Snoopy, or if you remember, if you can see, um, Snoopy has, of course, spots. And we can do that really well using our brush. We first want to go up to the ear. I'm going to draw the shape of the spot first. 
using my brush pen, I'm going to load a little more ink onto it and bring it down like this. Now here's where it gets fun. You can go in and just turn your brush to the side. So I'm not put, pointing it like a point. I'm actually using it like a paintbrush. And you can get that nice sketch look to your work too. He has a spot on his back here. So we'll put a little bit of black here. We'll follow the curve of the arm. And then of course his nose. And we leave a little bit of white. The Schultz was really the, the I'd say the uh, creator of white shine on black ink. So leaving that white shows that there's a little light coming down. And then we'll put in a couple of lines here for the feet, the toes. Of course his tail comes out like this. And from there, we have our characters. What we want to do now is go in and put a little bit of detail. So we'll put a couple of lines here on the ground. You know those flowers that we see? Uh, really easy to do that pretty quickly with ink. You just want to go in and put a few lines like that showing there's f the flower is laying on the ground. I'm using about, I don't know, I'd say um, minimal pressure for this. This isn't really part of the main drawing so you can have fun with this stuff. And then in the background, Schultz would always add these lines representing something in the background, grass or trees. Now, even though this does not look like a, any type of a setting in the background like from nature that you think of, um, just simply adding these lines here helps the viewer, or the reader of the comic strip or comic book or graphic novel to see that they're outside somewhere standing. And one last thing we're going to do is put a smile on Stoopy. There we go. Once this dries, you of course want to go back in with your eraser. And once you go in with your eraser, all of these lines that we created, these black lines, will, go, will stay and the pencil lines of course will go away. That's whenever you get the effect to the reader or the viewer or whoever's looking at your work that you sat down with an ink pen or a brush and you just drew this freehanded with, with uh, not much thought into it. Of course, if they look real close, they'll probably see pencil lines. Actually, I'm going to see before we close if I can erase one of these. Let's go in and sometimes if you erase too soon, you'll smudge. That might happen right now, but we're, gonna, we're just going to take a chance and see what happens. All right. And it looks like we didn't smudge it too much. So for this particular woodstock, you can see how different that looks now once we've actually taken all those pencil lines out. And this little guy here, this little idea of an oval, a couple of ovals slapped together with a few uh, squiggly lines and a tail, could one day become a physical object and something that people all over the world recognize immediately as being peanuts. So cartooning is important, um, art's important, um, creating and sharing is important, and at the art workshop, we really feel that if you follow along with us and create something, that needs to be shared. Because this isn't about me or anything I do with my art. This is just about us together drawing and you drawing with me. So if you have created something, we'd love to see it. Again, you can use the email address provided on the screen, um, pyktv 99 at gmail, and send it to us. Include your name, a little bit about yourself. We really appreciate you tuning in. Um, here at Pike TV, we understand that, you know, sometimes... There's struggles and challenges in life, but uh, we have tools that are easily accessible to us to be able to have enjoyment as well. Drawing is absolutely one of those. So thank you all so much for watching and your time. We appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Christopher Epling on behalf of Pike TV for the Art Workshop. Keep drawing.